It's time for Dodger Baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, Prime Ticket presents the Dodgers as they take on the Washington Nationals. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant evening to you on this Friday night, wherever you may be. The Dodgers and the Nationals, two first-place teams, banging heads for the weekend. Tonight, then tomorrow at 6-10, and the concluding game Sunday afternoon. Tonight, Clayton Kershaw will be on the mound with two streaks going. Remember, he's won 11 straight at home, and he has won nine straight decisions going back to last year. On the mound for Washington, Ross Detweiler, who comes in with a record of 2-0. and oh. The Dodgers off to a good start, stumbling a little bit against Atlanta. Washington somewhat of a big surprise, and we'll see just how long that surprise lasts this weekend. We'll get to the ball game. We'll have it all coming up for you right after this. What a tremendous shot that is. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Welcome back out to center field with Steve Lyons and Patrick O'Neill. What a pleasure it is to see Clayton Kershaw go tonight. Tomorrow, an opportunity to see Steven Strasburg for the Nationals. And it's such a phenom, right? But yeah. think about this stat. He's only... Four months, one day younger than Clayton Kershaw, and we can't take for granted what a gift it is for us to see how good Clayton Kershaw is every five days. Yeah, uh, Strasburg's the flavor of the month, basically. I mean, this guy is unbelievable because he throws 100 miles an hour. He's got a great curveball. But you look at his career record, 8-4 and four, with a 2-2-3. That's outstanding, but Clayton Kershaw has nearly 50 wins in the big leagues. Oh, and by the way, he also has a Cy Young. So I say, don't forget to dance with the girl that brung you. He's the guy we want to see every night. I'm happy to watch him pitch every fifth day. All right, so we get a chance to see uh, Strasburg tomorrow and Bryce Harper. Uh, but, you know, good chance for Strasburg maybe to just, just see what it's like to be a Cy Young winner. He's got a front row seat to see Clayton yeah. Kershaw. Sit over there and watch greatness. <laughs> 
All right, enjoy the game, everybody. Vince got the call, and we'll see you for our Dodgers live post. New Hyundai owners are talking. New Hyundai owners are talking about their cars in the booth by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T rethink possible by CarMax. Start the search for your next car at CarMax. Start here and by Dodge. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Friday evening to you, wherever you may be. Welcome to Dodger Stadium. It is a lovely evening. That mixed up weather pattern that we had for a week with some rain threatening all day and into the night seems to have moved away. Though we have a canopy of blue at sunset, the lights have not really taken much effect. And the crowd coming in should be a good one to see so far the number one surprising team in the National League. And we're not talking about the Dodgers. We're talking about the Washington Nationals. And here's Davey Johnson's lineup. He and Desmond at shortstop. Steve Lombardozzi at third base. Jason Wirth, a former Dodger in center field. Adam LaRoche at first base. Mark DeRosa in right. Danny Espinosa at second base. Xavier Needy in left field. Jesus Flores behind the plate. Ross Detweiler on the mound. On the mound for the Dodgers, Clayton Kershaw. Two and two lifetime against Washington. One and oh this year. He has a nine game winning streak as well as an 11 game winning streak here at Dodger Stadium. Now a couple of notes about Washington. First of all, the Nationals are a below average offensive team. Davey Johnson's club just doesn't hit any home runs. They're also 14 in stealing bases. They don't do that very well. They don't bunt often and when they do bunt they don't bunt well. They swing and miss at a lot of pitches. They usually don't run deep in count. They do draw walks but they don't hit into double plays. So that's a little cream off the top and Ian Desmond will start it off. Desmond rarely walks. He is 16th lowest walk rate. So look for him to be hungry at the pitch as he takes a strike. Desmond hitting 278. He has walked five times while striking out 14. The Nationals are 14 and 5, and they took the field two games in front of Atlanta. The next pitch swung on, fouled away, and they count 0 and 2. So if you had to sum up the Washington Nationals, who have won 14 of 19, seven of the last 10, it would be pitching followed by pitching followed by pitching. 
So a young ball club and will get even younger with a no ball two strike count on Ian Desmond and he swings doesn't get it. A.J. Ellis digs it out of the dirt strikes him out and that's really what you would expect in a lot of ways from Ian Desmond. Let's take a look at the Dodgers defensively. They shape up this way. Hairston, Kemp, and Deep here in the outfield. With Uribe, Gordon, Ellis, and Loney on the infield. And behind the plate, A.J. Ellis handling Clayton Kershaw. So one away in the first inning. And the batter now will be Steve Lombardozzi. Maybe you don't remember that name. If you are old enough, you may remember his father. Maybe. Lombardozzi was a big league player who sparkled in the World Series. Hard ground ball off the backhanded effort by Uribe into foul ground, and Lombardozzi will hold at first base. Steve's father, also named Steve, hit 412 in the 1987 World Series. He played for the Twins and helped them beat the Cardinals. Well, Uribe failing to make a play. Let's see how they're going to score it. You would expect a major league third baseman to be honest to make that play and they're going to rule it era five which is a good call. So that'll bring up Jason Worth. Jason Worth a very very good ball player had a bad year last year played for the Dodgers for a couple of years but he's back on the beam hitting 290 with two home runs. Nine runs batted in. Kershaw flips to first. Lombardozzi with all of his syllables back on the bag. Jason Worth might have had a wonderful time with the Dodgers, except he hurt his shoulder crashing into the wall in Colorado and then had his hand broken in a spring training game on a pitch inside that nailed him. Jason swings, hits one foul off first and out of play, 0 and 1. In December of 2010, while he was still with the Phillies, Jason signed a seven year deal worth $126 million. And maybe because of that, when he was with the Nationals, maybe he tried to show how good he was and it put a lot of pressure on him. He wound up hitting only 232 last year. But he's a far better player than those numbers. Right hand hitter takes very high. And a one ball one strike count. He comes out of the Schofield Worth family. His mom was an athlete. She competed in the long jump 100 meter Olympic trials. She was a world class sprinter. His father was a star football player at Illinois State and also played in the Cardinal organization. And there's a lot more for Jason Worth. His grandfather, Dick Schofield, Played with the Angels from 83 to 92, and his uncle, Dick Schofield Jr., heck, he played for the Dodgers here in 1967. They called him Ducky. So Jason Worth, great athletic genes, and the pitch to him a little high, and that runs the count two balls and one strike. Jason is 6'5, 215 pounder, and he can play. For Washington, it's not all beer and Skittles. They've had some players banged up. Ryan Zimmerman, outstanding third baseman, a bad shoulder. He had, I believe it was a cortisone shot, so he's not going to be playing. Brad Lidge has a bad side. Mike Morse, the big outfielder, hurt his back. He'd be in the lineup. And Worth, meanwhile, takes a strike on the inside corner and the count two and two. So Clayton Kershaw interesting as the Dodgers went off on a tear it took him quite a while to finally get a victory. So he comes in here one win no losses. Jason Worth, basically a fly ball hitter. Kershaw looks at first now the pitch of the plate foul to the screen and the count two and two. Jason Worth. With all of his abilities, will be 33 in the end of May. Two and two, the count. 
Jason is another fellow who usually sees a lot of pitches and he backs off on strike three called inside corner. Worth doesn't say anything. He very slowly walks away. Body language seems to think he was unhappy with the call. However, Worth gets it. Down he goes. Strikeout number two for Clayton Kershaw. And the batter now is Adam LaRoche. Adam LaRoche is one of those fellows, if he makes contact on the first pitch, he does very well. In fact, if he puts the first pitch in play, he's hitting a somewhat shocking 571. So look out here. Adam hitting 324, left hand batter swings, this time comes up empty, and they count 0 and 1. Adam, like Worth, is another fly ball hitter. Davey Johnson usually gives him the green light a lot, 2 and 0. Oh. A couple of things about Davey you ought to know. 0 oh and 1 to count to Adam LaRoche, and he takes low. You know how you talk about truth is stranger than fiction? When Davey Johnson was nine years old, growing up in Florida in spring training, he was the bat boy for the Washington Senators. And here he comes. 59 years later, he arrives as manager of a different Washington Senators ball club. Remember, the original club eventually moved to Minnesota. Then they had an expansion club that moved to Texas. And then this team, this Washington Nationals team, originally came by way of Montreal. One and one, the count to Adam LaRoche. He holds up on a high strike, and the count one and two. Two down, first inning, no score. Dodgers and Nationals opening up what should be a very, very good series. We'll be looking at Steven Strasburg, and he'll go up against Chad Billingsley tomorrow night at 6-10. Here's the one-two pitch on the way to Adam LaRoche. Instead, a throw to first. Kershaw not striding towards first. He straddled the rubber. And, of course, when you straddle the rubber, you're really in the air. He couldn't get much of a throw, and he bounced it, and Loney stayed with it. Tomorrow night, one of the most talked about young players in baseball will be in the lineup for Washington. His name is Bryce Harper. Here's the one-two pitch, and LaRoche takes in the dirt. Nice block by Ellis. Two and two the count. We're in the first inning just starting. No score. A couple of other notes about Davey Johnson. Number one in 1966. Davey Johnson got a base hit against Sandy Koufax. It was the last hit that Sandy would ever allow. Two and two the count to Adam LaRoche. Here comes Kershaw breaking ball drops in for a perfect strike three. So all Clayton does is start the game by striking out the side. And at the end of half an inning, no score.
15 pitches, struck out the side. Now we'll take a look at the Dodger lineup. D. Gordon leading off at short, Mark Ellis at second base, and Matt Kemp, who has three and a half times the home run of the Nationals outfielder. He has 10, they have three. Andre Ethier in right field, Jerry Hairston in left, James Loney at first, Juan Uribe at third, A.J. Ellis, the catcher, Clayton Kershaw, the pitcher. On the mound for Washington, a long drink of water. His name is Ross Detweiler, 6'5", about 180. He was a number one pick by the Nationals five years ago out of Missouri State. They signed him for a bonus over $2 million, and they say he can really pitch. Fastball, spike curve, and a changeup, and he comes in with a record of 2-0, and holding the opposition hitters to a batting average of 193. His first pitch to D. Gordon in for a strike, and they count 0 and 1. The last game that Detweiler pitched as Gordon hitting 236, swings, slaps one foul down the line, and they count 0 and 2. The last game he started, 12 of 22 hitters had two strikes. He retired all 12. In one inning, the fifth inning, he made five pitches to four hitters. The next pitch lunged at and missed. Gordon badly fooled, and down he goes. So we talked about Washington pitching, pitching, pitching. That could be the theme for the whole weekend. Here they are defensively with Xavier Nady, Jason Wirth, and Mark DeRosa. The infield, Lombardoza, Desmond Espinosa, and LaRoche. Jesus Flores handling Ross Detweiler. Now the better is Mark Ellis. Hitting 262. He has two runs batted in. Another thing about Detweiler as he works a fastball at the knees at the corner for a strike, he gets a lot of ground balls. In fact, if you can mathematically figure it, about two and a half ground balls to every fly ball. Strike one pitch on the way is hit foul off first, and the count 0 and 2. He has five strikeouts on three pitches this year. So Ross looks in getting a sign. He's just 26 and he works inside to spin Mark Ellis around and they count one and two. So Ross Detweiler followed by Steven Strasburg and then Gio Gonzalez and they can all pitch. The one two pitch on the way is a little low two and two the count. Back about four years ago. Randy Tomlin the pitching coach as Steven Stosberg just sits back and watches. Had to work on Detweiler throwing across his body he just bounces a curve. Detweiler didn't really embrace that eventually bought it. But then the next year. The Mats, after watching him, said, you know what? If you want to throw across your body, go ahead. And then, as someone said, did Bob Gibson throw us his body? Yes, he sure did. Here's the 3-2 pitch on the way. Fastball hit in the air to left field. Playable. Xavier Nady at the other end of it and squeezes it for the second out. So two down in the first inning, and now Matt Kemp coming up. Remember we told you that Matt Kemp with his 10 home runs. The outfield for Washington had three. Well the one man gang followed by Andre Ethier coming up. Matt Kemp so far on this homestand against Atlanta went four for nine with a home run and an RBI. So Matt checks in. Big man with the 10 hitting 449 debt fastball a little low ball one one and oh Matt in and out of the box then at the knees and waist Detweiler from the third base side of the rubber pitching out of a semi stretch fastball ground ball base hit in the left field by the diving Lombardozzi so Matt Kemp continues to hit the ball hard as he singles into left field and the batter will be Andre Ethier. Both the Dodgers and the Nationals 
play a lot of tough games. For instance, the Dodgers have played 19 games, and nine of them have been decided by one run. They've won six of the nine. Washington has played nine one-run games. They've won six out of nine. So Detweiler with a runner at first. Now working on Andre Ethier. A look over at Kemp. Now to the plate. Low and away. Ball one. In 176 innings so far this year, the Nationals have allowed four home runs. Ethier has four with 22 runs batted in. One ball and no strikes. Detweiler at the belt. Comes back with a curveball hit into the air to right field. Going back on the ball is De Rocha. It's in the bullpen. And the Dodgers take a two to nothing lead. Ethier got a curveball and he knew what to do with it. For well, Ross Detweiler, burned here early. Boy, Detweiler, that is his second home run. And he had just went down to get it. Had enough time to stay with the pitch. And then with that full fluid swing of his, reached the bullpen. So the Dodgers lead two to nothing in the first inning. And the batter now will be Jerry Hairston. So Andre driving in Matt Kemp. Kemp has 23 RBIs. Ethier now has 24. Pretty good race between those two. The first pitch to Hairston in for a strike and the count 0 and 1. So Detweiler is allowed two. By the way, the major league pitcher with the most home runs allowed, Irvin Santana of the Angels, has allowed 10 home runs in 23 innings. The pitch low and away. And a one ball, one strike count. So Andre Ethier showing that he can handle left handers. He was hitting 250 against them. The 1 1 pitch swung on, popped up to the right side. Waiting there is Danny Espinosa, and he'll make the catch. However, the damage is done. Andre Ethier reaches the national bullpen with a man aboard, and it's two to nothing, Dodgers. Surprise scoring in the first inning to lead two to nothing. Mark DeRosa, the former quarterback at the University of Pennsylvania, at the plate. Andre Ethier gets the Dodgers the lead. It's interesting so far this year what's happened in the first inning. The 1 0 pitch, hard ground ball to the left of Gordon. He's over there to make the play. And we have one away. 
in the first inning so far this year. The Dodgers have scored 21 runs and the opposition five. Second baseman Danny Espinosa. So the Dodgers jump out yet again thanks to Ethier and Kemp. And now Danny Espinosa checking in. Danny Espinosa spends a pretty good amount of time getting into the count, walks a bit. No power. He does have one home run, takes a pitch in the dirt, one ball and no strikes. Danny also has the reputation of swinging at the first pitch. So Espinosa up there, one ball and no strikes the count. Espinosa from Santa Ana takes a pitch high and away, ball two. He went to Long Beach State. Last year, he had 21 home runs, so that put him as far as second baseman behind Ugla, Joe Gordon of the Yankees, and then Danny. The 2 0 pitch is swung on and missed, and they count two and one. Last year, besides the home runs, he also had three bunt hits. He had five home runs last year against left hand pitching. And he'll still third for you, too. 2 1 pitch, swung on, hit over the head of Ellis into right center. Kemp over to cut it off, picks it up. On his way for two is Danny, and he is head first in there. So Espinosa, a long double to right center field, and the battle will be Xavier Nady. Hit number one of Clayton Kershaw, who struck out the side in the first inning. So Kemp racing over, made the turn, fired accurately, but Espinosa head first in there with the belly whopper. And so Xavier Needy will be coming up. Xavier Needy has bounced around a bit and struggling this year, hitting just 149. With a home run and one run batted in. Takes at the knuckles, ball one. As we told you, Michael Morse, a power hitting outfielder, but he can't play. He hurt his back. They will be bringing up Bryce Harper, the 19 year old. He'll get here about uh, midnight tonight, and he will be in the starting lineup against Chad Billingsley tomorrow. The 1 0 pitch, Nady fouls it back. Xavier born in Carmel went to the University of California at Berkeley. He is from a little town called the lettuce capital of the world. Salinas. Or is it Salinas? Salinas. One and one. Xavier's dad played college ball at Boston College and the University of Colorado. He takes a strike. And the count one and two. Xavier 6 2, 2 10, originally signed by the Padres. Boy, how the years go by. He was signed 12 years ago by San Diego. He's been with the Padres and the Mets, the Pirates and the Yankees, the Cubs, the Diamondbacks, and the Nationals. Everybody calls him X. And the 1 2 pitch of the right hand batter checked in the dirt, holding it second is Espinosa. And we have a two ball, two strike count. For Washington, they come in here with some pretty impressive numbers. Remember the Dodgers before the Atlanta series had won four of five series and 14 of 16. Well, Davies Club has won all six series this year, going back to last year, 11 out of 12 and nine straight. But they're in a hole right now to Kershaw, two to nothing. Clayton ready, here he comes. Fastball swung on and missed. Strikeout number four for Clayton. And with two out, the battle will be Jesus Flores. Gate, number 26. The catcher, catcher hitting Jesus in the eighth spot Flores. in the lineup. Flores, right hand batter. Flores hitting 353 with two runs batted in. He's from Sucre, Venezuela. Grew up idolizing Ivan Rodriguez and Andres Galarraga. 
He was in the Mets organization. They signed him originally. So the right hand hitter waiting in the pitch to him. Breaking ball low. Looked like a slider. One ball and no strikes. Clayton Kershaw allowed Lombardozzi to get aboard on the error by Uribe. Then Espinosa has doubled here in the second inning. And along the way, Clayton has struck out four. One ball and no strikes to Espinosa. The 1 0 pitch on the way. Swung on, little ground ball wide at third. Uribe is on it and throws him out. So no runs, one hit, a man left. And at the end of an inning and a half, Dodgers two, Nationals nothing. one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Lite. We're going to the bottom of the second inning with the Dodgers leading two to nothing. It'll be James Loney followed by Juan Uribe and then A.J. Ellis 13 pitches for Clayton Kershaw. So he's made 29 pitches allowed one hit while striking out four. Meanwhile, Ross Detweiler burned by Messrs. Kemp and Ethier. Kemp singled with two out, and Ethier followed with a home run into the Washington bullpen. So into the second inning we go with Loney to start it off. One thing about Washington, they lost last night to the Padres 2-1, to one, but they've still begun this year 8-3 and three when scoring fewer than four runs. So Davey knows his club plays a lot of close games and two nothing is not that much. Here is Loney hitting 222 a home run four runs batted in. James hitting 154 against left handers looks at a pitch down and away ball one one and zero. Oh. Loney Uribe and then A.J. Ellis two nothing Dodgers second inning. Out of a stretch goes Detweiler back with a fastball swung on and foul tip and the count one and one. Detweiler two years ago had hip surgery. Began the year on the DL. He had a lot of trouble with his hip. Left hander comes back one one gets that in there and the count one and two. Detweiler's has been clocked as high as 97 with the four seamer and 95 with the two seamer. Here's the one one now one and two and that misses to even it up two balls and two strikes. So Ross Detweiler out of St. Louis Missouri. Working on James Loney. Left handers two two pitch coming up. And it's hit up the middle slowly. Espinosa is on it, throws to first in time. 
If the ball had a little steam to it, it would have gone through, but it was slow enough, and Espinosa was able to come over and catch five, up to it. Third baseman, Juan Uribe. One away here in the second inning, and Juan Uribe coming up. Uribe hitting 255, had that four hit game to revitalize him a little bit. So Detweiler turns on the rubber, high leg kick, and the left hand is first pitch in for a strike, and the count 0 and 1. The starting staff for Washington, all of the starters combined, the earned run average coming into this game was 1.7. As Uribe takes a strike. So they've just been dynamite. And we'll see the highly touted Steven Strasburg tomorrow night. He's 2 0. Oh. Ground ball to first. Up with it easily there as LaRoche takes it to the bag. So we have two down in the second inning. And A.J. Ellis coming up. Two to nothing in favor of the Dodgers. Two out Catcher, single by Matt Kemp and a Ellis. home run into the right field bullpen from Andre Ethier. Shoulder to shoulder, they carry the ball club offensively, and they're shoulder to shoulder right now in the Dodger dugout. AJ Ellis doing a wonderful job, not only handling the staff so well, but hitting 277. So that's really a plus. Home run, six runs batted in. He takes a look at a breaking ball low. One ball and no strikes to AJ. He's been getting on base a lot. In fact, he's sixth in the league on base percentage. He takes a high strike and they count one ball, one strike. A.J., among other things, has hit safely in six of his last seven. And he has a good eye. He's walked 12 times. The 1-1 one, one pitch low and inside, ball two. Two and one to A.J. Ellis. Talking about the Washington staff, how well they're pitching. You know, the Dodger pitching staff in night games is holding the opposition to a 196 batting average. The next one is high ball three, three and one. So tomorrow at 610, Chad Billingsley will go to the mound against Steven Strasburg. Then Sunday, Chris Capuano and Gio Gonzalez. Fly ball to right field, deep enough to make DeRosa back up to the track, and he makes the catch for the out. Looked like a lazy fly ball watching the reactions of DeRosa, and all of a sudden he had to really go back and get it. At the end of two, two nothing Dodgers. Go to the third inning, Ross Detweiler followed by Ian Desmond and then Steve Lombardozzi in that order. 
against Clayton Kershaw, who has allowed one hit and struck out four. Struck out the side in the first inning. Detweiler at 6-5, swings, lifts a foul off to the right. Loney coming down. He's there now and makes the catch for the out. Interesting so far, the pitchers are exactly the same in one respect. Kershaw and Detweiler made 16 pitches in the first inning, and they each made 13 pitches in the second inning. So Detweiler pops up the first pitch. Now Desmond is struck out in the first inning, checking in. Desmond, right hand hitter, first ball swinging, ground ball to Gordon. He shoots him down. So two pitches, and we have two out here in the third inning. Lombardozzi coming up. A reminder tomorrow at 6 10. Celebrate Don Drysdale and Maury Will's bobblehead night, presented by Bank of America. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. Big D in the mouse. Don Drysdale and Maury Wills. Third inning with two out. Here's Lombardozzi, who reached on the error by Uribe in the first inning. Steve takes a strike, 0 and 1. Dodgers lost a wonderful guy. He was a big contributor to the 1963 championship Dodger club, and that was Bill Moose Scourin. Meanwhile, Kershaw gets him down on a minimum number of pitches as Lombardozzi didn't hang around. Four pitches, third innings in the books, two to nothing, God. Bottom of the third, Dodgers leading two to nothing. A somewhat refreshed Clayton Kershaw retired the side on four pitches in the top of the third inning. So Detweiler will face Kershaw, followed by Gordon and then Mark Ellis. Two runs, two hits for the Dodgers. If you weren't with us, with two out in the first inning, Matt Kemp rounded a single into left field, and Andre Epier followed with a home run into the Washington bullpen in right field. So Clayton at the plate hitting 333. Detweiler ready. Lanky left hander gets a strike and the count 0 and 1. Kershaw is 2 for 6, both singles. Clayton's also sacrificed twice. Detweiler comes back a bunt attempt. No indication, but now the right hand goes up. He's going to check. No bunt. So make it one ball and one strike. Clayton appeared to flick the bat, but not enough. One and one the count. Detweiler comes right back with a fastball on the outside corner, hitting an easy 91. 
game one of the three game series. Then the Dodgers will go out on the road to Denver and Chicago. The one two pitch grounded foul off to the left. When the Dodgers come home after that brief road trip. They will play the San Francisco Giants for the first three followed by Colorado and then Arizona. Then they will leave for just two games and come right home to play St. Louis. So they're going to be home a lot in the month of May. The one two pitch a look and it's low and the count two and two. So Ross Detweiler trying to get Washington off on the right foot. They've won seven of the last ten. Dodgers won four of six from them last year. Fastball fouled away by Clayton. So the left hand is still there. Two balls and two strikes. Don't forget Kershaw leading two nothing going back to last year has won nine straight and 11 straight here at Dodger Stadium. Two two pitch on the way fastball is low ball three. So Kershaw trying to get aboard. Clayton has not walked this year. He struck out twice. 3 2 pitch swung on. Little ground ball to Espinosa. Danny is up with it and makes the play. So one away here in the third inning. Two to nothing Dodgers. And D. Gordon, who struck out in the first inning, coming up. Ross Detweiler and that name might not be too familiar for you playing back in Washington you only play him a couple of games a year. But if you go back to the middle of September of last year coming into this game tonight you know what his earned run average was 0 0.3 a third of a run. Left handers pitch bunted by Gordon charging picked up a third by Lando Dozy who throws him out. Nice play by Steve. They handle that bunt and nail Gordon. So a pretty good bunt. The bare hand pick up and the accurate throw just in time. And we have two down in the third. And Mark Ellis coming up. Dodgers two runs, two hits. Nationals no runs, one hit. And it certainly would seem going into the series that runs will be at a premium. Mark Ellis flied to left field in the first inning. Right hand hitting second baseman. Detweiler high lanky kick and then comes in with a strike and they count 0 and 1. Mark hitting 258. Detweiler looks like he's going to go to a wind up then turns and looks like a stretch. But then he extends that right leg like a hook and ladder before delivering. Because he certainly couldn't do that with a man on base. At the very end of the third base side of the rubber. Turn sets high leg kick and the next pitch just outside took a lot off that that was a change up and the count two balls and one strike. Ross Detweiler. Now the two one pitch on the way. He comes back and a ground foul outside of third. For Detweiler, who came in with the reputation of being a ground ball pitcher, in the first inning, he gave up a fly ball to Mark Ellis, a pop up to Hairston, a single to Camp, and then the home run. So he was certainly off his feed in the first inning. 2 2 pitch is in there. Strike three call. Mark Ellis knew it. Down he goes. Second strikeout for Detweiler at the end of three, two nothing Dodgers.
Rodgers, Jason Worth, Adam LaRoche, and then Mark DeRosa against Clayton Kershaw, who has allowed one hit while striking out four. And the first man he faces is a big man, Jason Worth. And ball one. Jason is six feet five. His stepfather was a catcher with the Yankees and the A's. And when he was 12 years old, they were going to make him a catcher. He hits one in the air to left field, and Hairston is right there to steer. But as things worked out, Jason Worth was far too big to be a catcher. So one away here in the fourth, and the batter now, Adam LaRoche. First baseman, Adam LaRoche. So Adam LaRoche with one out. Adam, the son of former Major League pitcher Dave LaRoche, his brother Andy signed with the Dodgers back in 2003. That's a strike, 0 and 1. No balls and one strike. Big slow curveball, but it stayed up, which reminds us about Adam's dad because Dave LaRoche had a pitch he called the la lob. It wasn't exactly Rip Sewell's, but it was one of those high, big lobs to the plate. That's in there, one and two. When Adam was 14 years old, he was pitching batting practice for the minor league team where his father was the pitching coach. That's off the plate, two and two. Adam LaRoche actually was selected as a pitcher by the Marlins, but decided not to sign. Ball three. So Kershaw with one out in the fourth, leading two nothing. Three and two. Now back. Back in 2000, the Junior World Series, Junior College World Series, Adam LaRoche was the MVP. Adam will be 33 in November. He's only the fourth major leaguer to record his first two hits in the same inning. And he promptly singles to right field. So a one out fly ball single to right for Adam LaRoche. And the battle will be Mark DeRosa. Be sure to bring the kids to Dodger Stadium Sunday at 110. Dodgers and Nationals. First 15,000 kids, 14 and under in attendance, receive a Clayton Kershaw replica jersey. Compliments of Dryer's Grand Ice Cream. For tickets, go to Dodgers.com slash promotion. A one-out single by LaRoche. And here's Mark DeRosa. Veteran right hand hitter. Mark signed a one year deal in December to play for Washington. He was originally drafted out of the University of Pennsylvania when he was a football star by the Atlanta Braves. In the dirt. A.J. Ellis nice save. DeRosa a veteran 37 years old. His father always wanted to make it. His father never quite made it. But Mark's grandmother used to tell Mark's father, don't worry. Your son is going to play in the big leagues in your stead. And it worked out. Two and one. DeRosa came up with the Braves two years after he signed. Stayed with them. And then he went to the Rangers, the Cubs, the Indians, Cardinals, Giants. And here he is now with Washington. Went to the University of Pennsylvania and also the Wharton School of Business. Fouls away. He was working on a marketing degree at the Wharton School.
two to nothing in favor of the Dodgers. We're in the fourth inning. LaRoche right on the bag. I think we mentioned, among other things, Washington does not steal bases. They are 14th in the league in stolen bases. They have 14. The opposition has stolen 13 against them. Ball three. So Clayton went all the way with LaRoche, who's single to right, and he comes right back three and two with DeRosa. Danny Espinosa on deck. 47 pitches so far. And remember, he made only four in the third inning. Fastball hit wide at first. Loney, a good play to Gordon. Back to Kershaw, not in time. So they get a 3 6 force play, and perhaps Kershaw didn't have his foot on the bag. He tried to appeal, so apparently that was the subject. Take another look. Loney, a nice hop, easy throw to Gordon. Now Kershaw okay. handles the Second return team, throw. His foot, well, looks like it's touching, but evidently the throw wasn't in time anyway. So DeRosa hits into a force play. Two down. And the batter, Danny Espinosa, who doubled the gap in right center field. Espinosa one for one. Ball one. Danny Espinosa is a switch hitter and apparently the numbers say he hits for a far better batting average from the left side but he is stronger from the right. Last year Espinosa had a strange year in this respect. He struck out one hundred and sixty six times. Of those. 132 of them were against left hand pitcher. So he comes up empty a lot from this side, but he does have a home run. And it's fouled away. Two and one the count. Espinosa followed Troy Tulowitzki as Long Beach State shortstop. He also played with Evan Longoria. And he was signed by the Nationals third round only four years ago he just celebrated his 25th birthday on the 25th of April two and one to Danny Espinosa and that misses ball three late last year Davy Johnson was hoping that Espinosa would try to bunt more Probably against left hand pitching. He struck out so many times. Three and one to count. Fastball strike. Three and two. Espinosa hitting 221, but most scouts say he figures to. As he matures to hit around 270, he's a good ball player. Hitting back of him, Xavier Needy. Three and two with two out. Runner goes and it's in the dirt and struck out. So Espinosa going after a bad ball becomes strikeout victim number five for Clayton Kershaw. At the end of uh, three.
new wireless receiver from AT&T U-verse. Visit AT&T.com slash free your TV. By El Pollo Loco, crazy you can taste. And by Mercury Insurance. Get a free quote and get two Dodger tickets at Dodgers.com slash Mercury. 2-0 Dodgers, bottom of the fourth inning. Matt Kemp, Andre Ethier, and Jerry Hairston. And Kemp and Ethier produced the two runs in the first inning with two out. Matt single to left. And then Ethier hit one into the right field bullpen. The remarkable stretch where Matt has hit safely in 30 of 32. 0 and 1 to count. Kemp batting 457 with 10 home runs and 23 runs batted in. Oh and one. Big curveball that drops in. Big slow bender. Oh and two. Two runs, two hits for the Dodgers. No runs, two hits for the Nationals. And the fastball whacked into left field. And I'll tell you who was startled, Detweiler. If we have that on tape, let's see the location of that pitch. Detweiler couldn't believe it. He looked at his catcher. He looked at Kemp. Kemp's kind of laughing. Let's see if we can see that pitch and the location. Well, down and in below the knees. And look at Detweiler. How in the world did he hit that pitch? Well, Matt is just blazing hot. So Kemp two for two. And the batter is Andre Ethier, who homered in the first inning. And ball one. On deck, Jerry Hairston. Oh, he still has a shot. This is the 27th. And there goes Kemp. Then he hesitates on a base hit to left field. So Matt started to go. Then he stopped. And Ethier singles the other way. Nice bit of hitting. Take a look at the shortstop. He's figuring that Kemp is coming. So he'll go to cover. And the hole is wide open. So a nice bit of hitting. And it wasn't a fake by Kemp, I don't think. I mean, that was quite an exaggerated fake. So just like that, back-to-back -back singles, four hits, two apiece for Kemp and Ethier. And the batter is Jerry Hairston, who popped up in the first inning. Hairston, Loney, and Uribe in that order. Jerry, you played for the Nationals and also Milwaukee last year and turned in a good year with the Nationals. Shows bunt, take ball one. Campany here out there on the lines. LaRoche and Lombardozzi are up, although Lombardozzi Little caddy corner at third. One ball and no strikes to Jerry Harrison. Now he bunts. Play at third. It's going to be late, so he's close to first. It looked like Jesus Flores, the catcher, had told him to throw to third. And Detweiler looked, but Camp had the play beaten. And so Detweiler bails out his catcher by at least getting somebody at first. See that? And then he opts to go the other way. So Hairston moves his men along. Seven. First baseman. Second James and third. Lillian. First base open. Hairston getting fives. And the battle will be James Loney. The infield now has to play up. So Kemp at third. Ethier at second. Only the fourth inning. But since the offense for Washington is not rather robust. They have to hope to get some outs of the plate. James Loney, wow, 801 games, 799 hits grounded out in the second inning. And 
and low ball one. Coming into the game and looking at Detweiler, he had 15 strikeouts in 16 innings. He has two strikeouts in four innings tonight. One ball and no strikes. Ground foul, one and one. The so Detweiler already burned by a left hand hitter, Andre Ethia's two run home run. Loney came into the game two for 13. So Kemp singles, Ethier singles him to second, Hairston sacrifices. Dodgers trying to add to a two to nothing lead. One and one. Big breaking ball for a strike. Means can't believe it's a strike. No way. Played umpire, Angel Hernandez. Angel's been in the big leagues for 19 years. He said he became interested in being an umpire when he was 14 years old. He was born in Havana, Cuba, and lives in Florida. One ball and two strikes. Fastball on the hands. That fastball came in there at 93. So one and two the count. Ross Detweiler. 54 pitches up to here. Down 2 nothing. Juan Uribe on deck. Tomorrow night at 6:10, remember, Steven Strasburg and Chad Billingsley. And then on Sunday, Chris Capuano will go up against Gio Gonzalez. One and two to count. Fastball, a chopper backhanded by LaRose. Runners hold. He can tag Loney. Kemp started to think about coming if LaRose had turned to go back to the bag. But Adam's been around a long time, and he knew all Number I have five. to do is wait for the runner Third to come Eastern. to me and keep my Line. eye on Kemp. So Loney grounds to first. Two down, you rebay the batter with A.J. Ellis on deck. And let's see, will they pitch to your rebate? Hitting 250, four runs batted in. Your rebate is one for 16 this year against left handers. Infield back to a normal depth. Two out, runners at second and third. Two nothing Dodgers. Third ball popped in the air, foul, that'll go out of play. Flores comes back with no chance. Oh, and one. Juan Uribe rounded to first in the second inning. That night that he had the four hits, three of the four hits went to right field, and one was a single up the middle. Oh and one. Just off the plate. One and one the count. The Kemp mystified Detweiler when he singled to open up the inning. Then on what appeared to be a hit and run play, Ethier single to left. That's ball two. Fastball at 93. Hairston sacrifice. Loney grounded out with the runners holding. And here's your rebay. First base open, two balls and one strike. Two and two. When the Nationals come up in the fifth, they'll have Nady Flores and then the pitcher Detweiler. Two and two. 
Curve ball hit to the hole. Backhanded by Desmond. Throw on a bounce. Not in time. So Kemp scores. And the Dodgers lead three to nothing on a base hit by Juan Uribe. So Matt brings it in. Ethier goes to third. Nice effort by Desmond. Backhanding. Couldn't get anything on the throw. And Uribe beats the throw as LaRoche had to come off the bag. So it's an infield single. Scoring is Kemp. And the Dodgers lead three to nothing. And the batter now will be A.J. Ellis. Three runs. That's a lot of runs to put up against Washington. Especially with Kershaw pitching, huh? Ethier down the line from third. Breaking ball low, ball one. Three runs, five hits for the Dodgers. No runs, two hits for the Nationals. You have your rebay at first, Ethier at third, two out. Fastball in there, one and one. AJ checking with Wallet was also flashing something across to Uribe. Fastball just missed off the plate. Two and one. Detweiler due to bat third when the National come up in the fifth inning. 63 pitches. He has not had a very tough inning until now. So far, he has now made 21 pitches in the fourth inning. So for Davy Johnson, a tough situation down 3 0. Three and one in the dirt, and the bases are loaded. So while I having a tough inning, he's given up three hits. Number 22. One run. Pitcher, Clayton Kershaw. And with the bases loaded, Clayton Kershaw coming up. Clayton Kershaw. Had quite an at bat in the third inning. Oh, he grounded out 0 for 1. But it was an eight pitch at bat. And he comes up with Ethier at third, Uribe at second, Ellis at first. Fastball strike 0 and 1. Detweiler now has made 66 pitches. Half swing for a strike. 0 oh and 2 the count to Clayton Kershaw. Dodgers scored two in the first. The infield single by Uribe picks up a run here in the fourth. Swing. They're going to look. No swing, says Ed Rapuano. One and two to count. It looked like we might have a dream matchup with this series. Everybody was looking ahead. And it looked like it would be Clayton Kershaw against Steven Strasburg. But then there was a rain out with Washington, and that took Strasburg out of the rotation that would have had him go against Kershaw. And he'll pitch tomorrow night against Billingsley. Fastball got him looking. That's that. Seven Dodgers come to the plate. One scores, three left. And at the end of four, it's three nothing Dodgers.
the city of Los Angeles, home to the largest Korean-American community in the United States, quickly embraced the newest Dodger pitcher. Back swing, that'll do it. Ken Ho strikes out nine. Number 21. Let's you know, while we're talking game. about memories, we mentioned briefly the Dodgers lost a wonderful player today, Bill Moose Scourin, who won five World Series rings, four with the Yankees, and played first base when the 1963 Dodgers swept the Yankees. Moose Scourin and Yogi Berra are the only players in World Series history to have hit as many as three home runs total in the game sevens that they played in the World Series. Scourin hit game seven home runs against Roger Craig. That was when the Yankees beat the Dodgers in 1956. It was a grand slam. He homered against Lou Burdett of the Braves and Vernon Law in the 1960 World Series. That was the game forever remembered in Pittsburgh. Bill Mazeroski's home run. Quickly one away as Xavier Nady grounds out. And the batter now will be Jesus Flores. Number 26, catcher Jesus Flores. For Washington, down three to nothing to Kershaw. That's a pretty tough load. Ross Detweiler on deck. Talking about memories while we're on this subject, all you have to do is look over at Davey Johnson, who was a wonderful player in his career. We'll tell you a note or two about Davey. Check swing foul. In 1969, the Mets' miracle run is complete. The final out, Cleon Jones squeezing a long fly ball that was hit off the Baltimore Orioles' bat of Davey Johnson. That was the final out in the miracle Mets. One and one. One ball and one strike to count. Jesus Flores with Detweiler the pitcher on deck. One and two. Dodgers have won seven of nine at home. Nationals had won eight out of ten at home. Two and two. Dodgers scored two in the first, a two out single by Kemp and a home run by Ethier. In the fourth inning, singles by Kemp and Ethier, an infield single by Uribe got the third run home. So you're up to date. Two and two. Get to the hole, backhanded by Young. D. Gordon and the ball dropped by Loney. It'll be an error charge to Gordon. Backhand set for the throw and just bounced it. Normally Loney will make that play. Hit him right in the glove, rolls over his shoulder, and Flores is aboard. So D. Gordon draws the error. In case you care, he has now made six errors in the 19 games plus tonight. The bunt by Detweiler, fielded by Lonely, a low throw, and Gordon can't dig it out. So everybody's safe. So Gordon unable to handle. The bunt, which would have just been a sacrifice. Here's Loney. Throws it low, one hopper. So Loney will draw an error. Back to back errors with one out. And for Don Mattingly, he was talking about the fact that his ball club is making too many mistakes. 
So two rather routine plays the ground ball to short and the bunt. And now the Nationals have a look and here's Ian Desmond the shortstop who has some power. And ball one. AJ gone out to talk so. And looking at Desmond for instance last year. He had eight home runs, 49 runs batted in. He has Flores and Detweiler out there as they try to get back in the game. And very high. One thing the Nationals have done, interestingly enough, is from the seventh inning on, they score, they come back. As Jason Worth hangs out. From the seventh through the ninth, they do some scoring. Fly ball to right center field and deep. Ethi is there. Tagging up at second is Flores, and he'll move over to third. Detweiler had a hold at first. So the batter will be Lombardozzi with two out and runners at first and third. By the way, Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. All right, Desmond, fly ball to right, advancing one. So with two errors, the Nationals getting five outs in the inning. Lombardozzi. Grounded to third and error charge to Uribe and then grounded out in the third. Dodgers had committed three errors. Of course, Lombardozzi is playing for Ryan Zimmerman, and Zimmerman is a star, but he has a bad shoulder and unable to play. In fact, Washington figures to have a better offense when they get Ryan Zimmerman back. He's rubbing up a ball in that light windbreaker. They get Michael Morse back. They're going to have young Bryce Harper tomorrow night. So they've been hurting. Brad Lidge has a bad size. Storm had chips in the elbow. So even the closure has disappeared for Davy, and yet they started the night two games in front of Atlanta. 0 and 2 to Lombardozzi. Little pop fly. It will be Loney. And that's that. So despite two errors in the inning, the Nationals fail to cash it in. And at the end of four.
five hits, despite the fact they've made three errors. Detweiler's ball club unable to score a run. In comparing them, uh, almost the same number of pitches. Five strikeouts for Clayton Kershaw, three for Detweiler. And obviously, not taking anything away from Kershaw, but Detweiler has a much tougher team to face. Messrs. Kemp and Ethier especially. So in the fifth inning as A.J. Ellis sits alongside Clayton Kershaw. Dodgers getting ready. It'll be Gordon, then Mark Ellis, and Matt Kemp. Three runs, five hits, three errors for the Dodgers. No runs, two hits for the Nationals. Gordon struck out in the first inning and then is thrown out trying to bunt. Matt Kemp is unbelievable. Listen to these numbers. This year, he's hitting 600 against left-handers. At Dodger Stadium, he's hitting 545. And tonight, he's two for two, two singles, and he has scored two of the three Dodger runs. That is pretty amazing. So here's Gordon. Espinosa's on that. So Gordon doesn't hang around. He goes quickly one away. Mark Ellis has flied to left and struck Number out 14. over two. Second baseman, Mark Ellis. Matt Kemp on deck. That's a strike. 0 and 2 to count the mark. Bottom of the fifth, one away. One and two. High and away fastball at 92. Dent Ryler now over the 70 pitch mark. Breaking ball hit foul down the line out of play. Oh, Mark still up there. One ball and two strikes. Hitting 254. Fastball line drive caught by Deadweiler. I'm not sure if he dropped the ball. Is it in play or not? The plate umpire said, no, don't bother. You caught it. So Ellis hits a bullet that finds Number the glove of Ross Detweiler right there. Then he dropped it. And that's why he wondered, do I have to throw the first or not? And he said, no, don't bother. So two out, and here's Matt. A two-out single in the first inning was cashed in on the home run by Andre Ethier. And then the leadoff single in the fourth inning was cashed in by the infield single by Juan Uribe. Ground ball to third, gobbled up there by Lombardozzi to get him. And that's that. That goes quickly. At the end of five, three nothing done.
had was way back in 1952. Game in Ebbets Field with the Reds. One of the most feared pitchers in the league, Ewell Blackwell, was pitching for Cincinnati. He was long and skinny, right-handed, threw by way of third base, and his arm was like a buggy whip. The hitters were really afraid of him. Well, what happened that night in the very first inning? The Dodgers scored 15 runs and beat the Reds 19 to 1. You never can tell. Let's go back to this one. Here's Jason Worth and the strike. Jason is struck out, fly to left, 0 for 2. Jason always looks like the star of a passion play. One and one. Ball two, two and one. Yeah, that game in 1952, Billy Cox, third baseman for the Dodgers, led off and grounded out. And you know, you thought, well, we're in for a dandy of a game. Oh. During the inning when the Dodgers were leading three to nothing, they had a left fielder named Andy Pafko, and he was thrown out trying to steal third. And the final out of the inning, after the Dodgers had scored 15 runs, they had the bases loaded with two out, and Duke Snyder struck out. They wound up winning the game 19 to 1. Amazing. We're three nothing Dodgers in the sixth inning. Worth LaRoche and DeRosa. And ball four. Now tomorrow night, we're not going to see Ewell Blackwell, but we're going to see someone who has major tremendous First respect in the league. Lawrence. Young Steven Strasburg. He was a first round pick in 2009. Had Tommy John surgery. But has come back and look at his ERA of one. He's two and zero. Oh. And being in uniform tomorrow night, the first round pick two years ago, and they just talk about him with hushed whispers of respect. He's 19 years old, Bryce Harper, and he'll be in the lineup tomorrow. I can tell you one story. When Davy Johnson was invited to be the main speaker. At a home run hitting contest in St. Petersburg, Florida. And the home run hitting contest involved youngsters 15 to 17 years old, and they were from all over the country, the top young home run hitters. And Davy said this kid, Bryce Harper, he didn't know who he was, hit a bunch of them to win, one of them at least over 500 feet, and he was 15. And that night, Davy spoke and presented Harper with the award as the number one teenage home run hitter. Well, life is strange, and Davy will welcome young Bryce Harper and put him in the starting lineup tomorrow night. 0 and 2 to count to Adam LaRoche. Breaking ball hit in the air to right. Ethier back to the track. The wall gone. So a walk followed by the home run and all of a sudden the Nationals who have a habit of scoring late in the game have cut it Dodgers three and Washington two. For Clayton Kershaw that's the first home run that he's allowed this year. And for Clayton the count probably bothers him more than anything. It was a no ball two strike count and that's a killer. So LaRoche. Drives it out for Adam LaRoche's third home run. Ground ball wide a third. Uribe is on it. Plenty of time to get DeRosa. Well, let's get you thinking a little bit. We have the moment. Here it is. Nolan Ryan became baseball's all time strikeout leader Second on this man, date in 1983. Whose record did he break? Well, we give you the answer.
Dodgers three, Nationals two are in the sixth inning. Danny Espinosa hitting just 217. 0 and 1 to Danny. And of course, being from Santa Ana, he's probably got family and friends in the stands. Adam LaRoche, of course, a local boy for a while. In the dirt. One and one. When Davy Johnson was talking about he'd like to see Espinosa bunt more last year, he brought up the name Rod Carew. Foul back. And Davy said, hey, Rod Carew is a great hitter, but he can bunt 300. And he felt that Danny Espinosa can do the same thing. So a lot of talent. Danny is. Just 25, born in Santa Ana, and as we mentioned earlier, went to school at Long Beach State. And meanwhile, Adam LaRoche has just picked up his ball club and got him right back in the game. Two and one. You don't see Kershaw give up many home runs, and especially not on a no ball, two strike count. Adam LaRoche originally from these parts from Orange County but Adam now has a big ranch out in Fort Scott Kansas. Three and two. One other note about LaRoche the last left hand hitter to take Kershaw deep here Freddie Freeman the first baseman for Atlanta over a year ago. Fouled away. Of course, Adam LaRoche is a home run hitter. He hit as many as 32. He's at 25 twice. There was no surprise when he hits one out. Meanwhile, Espinosa on a three and two count. Fouled away. On deck, Xavier Needy. Dodgers scored two in the first, one in the fourth. Nationals two here in the sixth. Breaking ball lifted to right field, but Ethier has the Two down, and Needy coming up. Struck out, grounded to short. Number 21. Left fielder Xavier Nady. So Nady playing left field tonight. We we were talking to uh, Davy Johnson before the game, and he was telling us Bryce Harper will be here about midnight tonight. I said, "Are you going to play him tomorrow?" He said, "If I didn't play him tomorrow, they'd kill me." Your rebate, and that's that. However, two runs on the home run by Adam Larose. And at the end of five and a half, three two Dodgers.
Dodgers holding on to what is now a three to two lead bottom of the sixth inning and one swing of the bat by Andre Ethier so far is the big difference. Got a breaking ball and he hit it into the bullpen in right field with Matt Kemp aboard. That gave the Dodgers a two to nothing lead. Dodgers since then added one and then gave back two. So Andre with five home runs, 24 runs batted in. For Detweiler, that home run was the second that he's allowed. Kershaw's home run was the first that he's allowed. 0 and 1 they count to Andre Ethier. Ethier coming into the game was hitting 250 and then hit that big home run. And then next time up, he singled the other way to left field. Foul ball. 0 oh and 2 to Andre. Jerry Hairston is on deck. They got the news to Jerry. His brother Scott, playing for the New York Mets, hit for the cycle tonight against the Colorado Rockies. Ball one. His brother had a single in his first at bat. Then he hit a home run in his second at bat. Then he had a triple in his third at bat. And then in his last at bat, Scotty doubled for the cycle. So when they told Jerry, hey, your brother just hit for the cycle, Jerry's comeback was, that's it. I got to do something tonight. So we'll see. He has popped up and sacrificed, but now has to be inspired. Big foul ball. Two and two, the count to Andre Ethier. After he got that knee fix last year, he's back to that wonderful swing and hitting 307. Five home runs, 24 runs batted in, one more than Matt Kemp. Curve ball, little dribbler. Espinosa, bare hand pick, a nice play. Very, very nice play by Danny Espinosa. So Ethier is out on a close play, and it took a good play to beat him. There's the bare hand, the off balance throw. Just got there ahead of him. And now here's Jerry Hairston, who feels he has to do something. Number six. And for his Let's brother, hit for the cycle. Hairston. Danny Espinosa making a good play. Jerry hitting 286. Big overhand breaking ball missed. One ball and no strikes. Jerry has been a godsend for the Dodgers when Uribe was having trouble. He had a couple of game saving plays at third base. And he's handled himself very well in left field. While Juan Rivera is out. Two and up. Don't forget tomorrow night at 6:10, Steven Strasburg and Chad Billingsley. Three and up. on deck, game Filoni. One out, six inning, three-two Dodgers. Remember we mentioned the Dodgers have been in nine games decided by one run. And they're six and three. Washington has been in nine games decided by one run. They're six and three. Let's go Number back seven. to Nolan Ryan and First strikeout. James Whose Money. record did he break in 1983? Oh, yes. Walter Johnson. All with the Washington Senators. Walter Johnson. Was he ever something? James Loney.
So Hairston with the walk. Loney has grounded out twice to second and to first. Don't forget, in talking about Nolan Ryan, you know, he pitched for 27 years. ball. So not only did he break Walter Johnson's record but he kept on pitching and he went on to strike out 2,206 more batters. So Noli wound up with 5,714 strikeouts. The most amazing thing about Nolan Ryan he was still throwing hard. I mean really hard. The end of his career. Jerry Hairston has stolen one and been caught one. Loney hitting two fourteen. Good fastball up and in at 91. 0 oh and 2 the count. For Detweiler, he is now up in the 90s in his pitching and he's due to bat second in the seventh inning. 0 oh and 2. the hands a little foul Lombard dozy so Steve gives it his best shot it's a pat on the back from his pitcher for well, Lombard dozy of course doing everything he can he's replacing Ryan Zimmerman who is an all-star has a gold glove, has a silver bat, but Zimmerman is down with a bad shoulder. Whoa. So Loney fooled on public enemy number one, that big breaking ball. Down he goes. Number five. Boy, Detweiler, his game. fourth strikeout. Juan Uribe. And Juan Uribe coming up. Kershaw struck out five. Not many when you realize he struck out the side in the first inning. Craig Stammen is beginning to throw in the bullpen. As we mentioned, Detweiler is due to bat second in the seventh inning. So Craig is up. Ground ball to short. Desmond almost a save by Espinosa. Big play. Somehow, Danny was able to stay on the bag. So no runs, no hits, a man left. And at the end of six, Dodgers three, Nationals two. Big play.
provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Dodgers trying to hold on to a 3-2 to two lead. Jesus Flores, and then we'll see about Detweiler or a pinch hitter. And then the leadoff man, Ian Desmond. fly ball shallow left Gordon out here's coming in the floor is a fly ball one away now Roger Bernardina will be coming up to bat for Detweiler so Bernardina will be first out of the bench he's from Curacao as Detweiler allowed three runs and five hits your attention please Roger Bernardina is very fast. Two, Last Bernardino. year he had 19 infield hits, including seven bunt singles. He was originally signed by the Expos. And ball one. Roger, 27, he'd be 28 in June. From Curacao. Though we saw Jair Jurgens, we've seen Kenley Jansen. And now we see Roger Bernardina. Montreal, when they had the big league club, they had an academy in the Netherlands. He's been learning to drag bunt, so the Dodgers shorten up. One and two the count. Bernardino might have lost a little bit of his speed. A little over two years ago, he broke an ankle crashing into a wall. And the curveball will send him back empty him. The Bernardino strikes out. Two out. You know, you can join the Dodgers Saturday, May 19th, the Dodger Stadium 50th Anniversary Fan Fest Number presented 20. by State Farm. Short There'll stop. be autographs and music, live entertainment, games, and more. Gates open at 12 prior to the game with the Cardinals at 7:10. Entry is included with your ticket to the game. Visit Dodgers.com slash 50th. Ian Desmond struck out, grounded to short, flied to right, hitting 268. He has two home runs. For Kershaw, when he struck out Bernardina, that gave him six strikeouts. Now back. Two and one to Ian. A couple of years ago, Desmond had surgery. They removed the handmade bone. In his left hand. In the dirt. Two and two. What kind of a, a drive inside of Ian Desmond? Well, he went to Sarasota High School. His coach was Clyde Metcalf. And on Sunday, he'd go by Metcalf's house to get the keys to the batting court. This time, fly ball to Matt King. So for the Nationals, they go one, two, three, and at the end of six and a half, Dodgers lead three to two.
box, you can try the new Chipotle Chicken Club combo for just $4.99 plus tax. Buy 76 gas, we're on the driver's side. By Club Serrano, get in on the action, go to sanmanuel.com for details. And by Toyota, check out the full line of fuel-efficient vehicles at your Southern California Toyota dealer. Well, we go to the bottom of the seventh inning, and the Dodgers leading 3-2. to two. Clayton Kershaw still in there. Meanwhile, Ross Detweiler, who pitched well, came out a buck short. And they give the ball to reliever Sean Burnett, the left-hander working now to A.J. Ellis. Sean Burnett from Florida was a first-round pick by the Pirates. And as you can see, he's been very effective. Growing up, they tell me that Burnett used to watch all of Tommy Glavin of the Red Braves, all of his starts. He was still in high school, but he learned a great deal about it. Burnett will be 30 in the middle of September. 6 1, about 195, left handed all the way. That's in there. AJ Ellis flied to right and walked. The pitch count for Clayton Kershaw, he's made 97 pitches through seven, and that's ball four. So A.J. Ellis walks twice tonight. That means he's walked 14 times Number 22, this year. Pitcher Clayton Kershaw. He's done a great Kershaw. job, and here's Clayton Kershaw coming up. Kershaw. Had an eight pitch at bat and grounded out. Last time up, struck out. And then he gets the bunt down. Burnett's play is to second. Just in time. By a hair. Nice play by the pitcher. Well, Sean Burnett makes an excellent play. And the L.A.J. Ellis. He had to be perfect. And he just got it there in time. Number nine. That close. Shortstop. Look at that. T if the left leg had been fully extended, Ellis might have beaten it. Sean Burnett. Interesting little note about him. His father survived a brain tumor a few years ago. So in his honor. Sean has a tattoo on his back that simply says against all odds by the rich. Two and oh the count. D. Gordon has struck out, tried to bunt his way aboard and was thrown out and grounded out. Two and one. That'll give you the jelly leg, as Roy Campanella used to say. Burnett coming by way of first base. Two and one to D, hitting 227. Fastball, and he just did get a little of it. Two and two. The report on Burnett, pretty good fastball, not overpowering. Curveball, a great changeup that he might have copied from Tommy Glavin. And a slider. Sean Burnett. Two and two. Popped up. Right side, cutting across Espinosa. So Gordon goes 0 for 4 as he pops it up. And the batter now will Number be Mark 14, Ellis. Second baseman, Mark Ellis.
Mark Ellis flied to left, struck out, and then hit a line drive that found Detweiler's glove in the fifth inning. 0 for 3, hitting 250. Tries to bunt, leaves it in floor is mitt. 0 and 1 the count. One ball and one strike. Fast ball off the plate. He hits 90. With two out, big at bat because you have Matt Kemp on deck. And then Ethier. Same spot, missed again. Couple of fastballs at 90. Three and one to count to Mark Ellis. Fastball. If you're the hitter in that kind of a spot, it's three and one. You have Matt Kemp on deck. You got to believe you're going to get a fastball. And you have to believe three and two, you're going to get a fastball. They don't want to see Matt following a walk with two on. Now let's see what he gets. Runner goes, and the fastball is low. So Matt's coming up. Kershaw at second, and Davy Johnson making his way out. He has a right hand to Ryan Mathers down in the bullpen. And the chances are they're going to bring Ryan in. They are. So we'll be right back. Ryan Matthews was announced. Matt Kemp went over to Dave Hansen to get a report on him. And the report will probably read pretty good four seam fastball. He has a two seamer that sinks a bit. He has a slider. And when he was a starting pitcher, Matthews also had a fork ball. But once he went to the bullpen, he gave up that splitter or fork ball. So Matt has read the report and he'll be coming up. Dave Hansen has done a wonderful job as the Dodgers hitting coach. Matthews spells his name M-A-T-T-H-E-U-S, but it's still pronounced Matthews. He's from Elk Grove, California, originally drafted by the Rockies. 
The Nationals sent former Dodger Joe Bimel to the Rockies to get Ryan Matthews. And a strike. Kemp single left in the first inning, Ethier then homered. Matt singled in the fourth, Ethier followed with a single. Then last time up, Kemp grounded out. So the Dodgers with two on, Kershaw and Ellis. All the way to the backstop, quickly bounced back, but no play. So the wild pitch will send Ellis to second base. And Kershaw to third. Big curveball. Flory's trying to backhand that curveball in the dirt. That's that's not a very good play for a catcher with two men on. One and one. Fastball. Two and one. Well, the gun read that that fastball was 95, and the reports on Matthews say he can and has gotten it up to 97, even though he had reconstructive elbow surgery a couple of years ago. Little ground ball to short. Desmond, you coming? So the Dodgers lead two. And at the end of seven, Dodgers three, Nationals two. As he takes the mound in the eighth inning. Seven innings, three hits, and two earned runs. He walked Jason Worth, opening up his sixth inning. And then Adam LaRoche, the left hand hitting first baseman, hit one in the bullpen to get the Nationals close. In the eighth, it'll be Lombardozzi, Worth, and LaRoche. So the work is suddenly cut out for Clayton. They are moving around in the Dodger bullpen as Adam LaRoche due to bat third in the inning. Josh Lindblom is first man up. He hadn't thrown yet, but he is getting ready. Lombardozzi reached on an error, grounded out, popped up, 0 for 3. A switch hitter, and they say he's a good bunter. They have to worry about him. No home runs, three RBIs. Loney is back. But Uribe is about even with the bag at third. Check 2 and 0. Oh. For Kershaw, the walk that he gave up was followed by the home run. He has struck out six. Ground foul. 2 and 1. Lombardozzi signed out of St. Petersburg, Florida Community College. 
waiting on deck, Jason Worth. Pretty good fastball. Throwing hard at 93. Two and two the count. For Lombardozzi, his high in home runs, even in the minors, four. So he's basically a gap hitter. Two and two. Curveball, little pop fly. It will be Loney or Ellis. Ellis. Now this should be a pretty good battle late in the game. One run game. Jason Worth checking in against Clayton Kershaw. In the past, Worth four hits, but a 222 batting average. So really it's less than that now. He has four hits and 22 at bats against Clayton Kershaw. And a strike. Of course, Worth, who has hit as many as 36 home runs for the Phil, promptly pulls one down the left field line. Foul ball. 0 oh and 2 the count to Jason. Kershaw now, 104 pitches. And Jason picking up number 28. You know who uh, they, uh, Jason Worth craves for his success with the Phillies for the years he was there? Davy Lopes. He said Davy Lopes isn't a hitting coach, he is a baseball coach. Out of anybody, Jason Worth said, I'd say Davy Lopes was probably the best coach I ever had. He is awesome. Uh, there's Davy. I'm sure he appreciates worth from ours. One and two. Dodgers appreciate the crowd tonight. Forty four thousand eight hundred and seven. Two and two. Jason Worth was originally selected by Baltimore in the first round as a catcher. In fact, Jason spent something like six years in the minor leagues as a catcher, even though he's six feet five. Pulled, and it's a foul ball, won't count. Foul. Ed Rapuano right there to call it on the foul line. Dodgers got Worth from the Blue Jays in 2004. But as we told you, he was banged up. Damaged a shoulder, broke a hand. So the Dodgers didn't sign him, but the Phillies did, and were they ever happy? Two and two. Fastball, fly ball. Here comes Hairston. Two down here in the eighth inning. And Adam LaRoche coming up. Hey, by the way, you're hitting the road. You can take the Dodgers with you this season. Subscribe to MLB.tv today. See every Dodger out of market game live online and on your favorite devices. In HD quality. Visit Dodgers.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv, baseball everywhere. And ball one. As well as Kershaw is pitching as he faces Adam LaRoche. He's struggling in a sense. He's had twice as many three ball counts as 0 and 2 counts. That's not his normal style. Just 10 swings and misses. Then 18 foul balls. And yet when it's all said and done. He's pitching a three hitter and he's in the eighth inning. I think 
Adam was trying to even up the score with that swing. One and one. He has three home runs, 16 runs batted in. Remember, Kershaw has won 11 straight at home and nine straight decisions. One and two the count to Adam LaRoche. Clayton with six strikeouts, one walk. And a fly ball to left field. Hairston back to the track. Makes the catch. The down go the Nationals one, two, three. That's nine in a row retired following the home run. And the Dodgers still lead three, two. Dodgers big run the one that is the difference now is back in the fourth inning Matt Kemp hit a fastball for a base hit that while it couldn't figure out how he hit it and then he fears single to left field and with two out the hit one to the hole and through here it comes and this was the big play the throw to first not in time the Dodgers third run of the game came in and that's it. Meanwhile, Clayton Kershaw has made 113 pitches for eight innings. Kenley Jansen is warming up in the Dodger bullpen since Javi Guerra took that line drive off the jaw the other night. It looks like they will ask Kenley to close it up. For Kershaw, his last time out in Houston, he made 104 pitches. So Clayton sitting back with A.J. Ellis, a job well done for both of them. Three runs, five hits for the Dodgers, two runs, three hits for the Nationals. The look on Detweiler's face when Matt Kemp singled in the fourth inning was one of complete puzzlement. He looked at his catcher, he looked at Kemp as if say, how in the world did he hit that ball? It was a single to left, and it led to what is now the difference in the game. Of course, Matt is so strong and can hit him any which way. Ethia, meanwhile, homered to right, single to left, and lost out on a fine play by Danny Espinosa. And he's done on that pitch. So Matthews strikes him out. One out in the eighth. Number six, left fielder 
Jerry Hairston. Here's Jerry Hairston popped up, sacrificed, and walked. We mentioned earlier his brother Scott playing for the Mets. Hit for the cycle tonight against Colorado. If you're wondering about the Nationals in the ninth inning, they have Mark DeRosa, Danny Espinosa, and Xavier Nady. Dua. And it figures they will be facing Kenley Jansen. One and one. Tomorrow night, 6 10 game, remember? Drysdale, Will Bobblehead, and Steven Strasburg and Chad Billingsley. On the corner. Deadweiler, Burnett, and Matthews. And for the Dodgers, Clayton Kershaw. Well, Clayton with those two amazing streaks. Still very alive. He won 11 in a row at Dodger Stadium. And he's won his last nine decisions. So Kemp, Mark Ellis, Andre Ethier, and Clayton. One and two. Two and two. Hairston batting 286. Behind him, James Loney. Dodgers with five hits. Kemp has two singles. Ethier has a single and a home run. And Uribe has an infield single, and that's it. And that's poked into right field. Base hit. So Hairston goes one for two because he also walked and sacrificed. Take a look at the Dodger box score. Number seven. As you First can see, baseman, Kemp and Ethier James bunched up with Money. four hits. And Uribe with that RBI single. Tony Gwynn will now run for Hairston and then finish up in left field. Number 10, Tony Gwynn Jr. So Hairston comes out. Win runs for him. And here's James Loney. Loney grounded out twice, struck out, 0 for 3. All of his at bats were against Ross Detweiler. So now he sees a right hander. Tony Gwynn one for two in stolen bases. Dodgers lead three two bottom of the eighth inning. Ball one. James hitting two forty four against right hand pitching. He had a little five game hitting streak snapped Tuesday night. But in the last 11 games, he's picked up. He hit better than 320 over that stretch. 1 and 0. Ryan Matthews, the third national pitcher. To repeat, DeRosa, Espinosa, and Nady are due up in the ninth inning for Washington. The number one pinch hitter for Washington is old friend Chad Tracy. Remember Chad playing? Third base for Arizona. Well, if they go to the bench, figures they would use Chad. One ball and no strikes. Two and a. 
There's Chad Tracy. Waiting for a call. Tracy, by the way, is struggling, but he does have five RBI. Two balls and no strikes. Now back. 44,807 tonight. Beautiful summer's night. And we'll have fireworks as we do every Friday night. Tomorrow night will be the bobblehead, Don Drysdale and Maury Will. Two and one. Green bluffs. Two and two the count to Loney. Waiting quietly on deck. Juan Uribe, who is one for three. Popped up, angling across is Desmond. Gwynn will make the play. So Loney pops it up. Gwynn has to hold at first. James goes 0 for 4. And the batter will be Juan Uribe. Rounded out, single of the hole at short, and hit into a force play. And Uribe's base hit to the hole at short cashed in Kemp with what is now the go ahead run. Down south, the Padres and the Giants are playing. In fact, Padres are leading five to two, and the game is in San Francisco. So the Giants began the day three games behind the Dodgers, and they're losing to San Diego. With two out, we'll see about Gwynn trying to go. They think he might. A.J. Ellis on deck. And that's going down the right field line. So they're going to have a rabbit loose. Gwynn is going to be waved in. The relay by Espinosa is in time to get him. Whoa, the Dodger bench exploded. And Don Mattingly coming out to argue. Played him by Angel Hernandez right there to call it. A great throw by Danny Espinosa as Matt Kemp polished fertilizer. There's the throw. And here comes Espinosa throwing a dart. It looked like the plate was blocked. See that left knee? No way to get in. The hand couldn't air. So that was a fine call. And remember, the plate umpire doesn't have slow mo. He has one.
time. Tony Gwynn is trying to get his left hand on the plate, and Flores has the plate blocked with his left leg. The hand never touched the plate, and Flores got him, and that really was a rather remarkable call by Angel Hernandez. Take another look. There's the block. There's the hand. Can't get in there. And then he tags him going by. So it is one thing to be sitting there calling a play with your heart. And that was a, a wonderful call by a plate umpire who was able to see the, the block, the hand, and make the call. Where the Dodgers were, of course, they all saw it with their hearts. So did the crowd. But Angel Hernandez made a wonderful call. All right, Kenley Jansen is closing. You may remember the other night, Javi Guerra took a wicked line jive off the side of his jaw. Came off the bat of David Ross. Fly ball in the gap. Late start for Matt, but he's coming. So DeRosa, fly ball to center, one away. It's not that uh, Javi's jaw hurts, nor does his arm hurt. But he was so staggered by the line drive, surprising really that he didn't go down. But in staggering off the side of the mound, he kind of hurt his knee and leg a little bit. So Jansen comes in, gets an out. Danny Espinosa, who has double struck out and flied to right, the switch hitter will now bat left handed. One out, ninth inning, 3 2 Dodgers. Ball one. Espinosa made a great relay from Mark DeRosa to get the out at the plate. Dodgers trying to go seven and three in one run games, and Tony Gwynn never said a word. He knew he didn't get his hand on the plate. A drive hooking down the right field line in the corner, and it is foul. Espinosa thought it might have had a chance to go, and all we did was keep our eye on Mark Colton, who is the first base umpire. Well, that was close. Right down in the corner. That close. Almost hit the foul pole. That would have been a home run. Take another look. Wow. So near and yet so far. So Danny with one home run. Mark Colson right there to follow the flight of the ball. They're cutting things close in this one. Three runs, seven hits for the Dodgers, two runs, three hits for the Nationals. Foul back. One and two to Danny Espinosa. A reminder tomorrow night, 6 10. Dodgers and Nationals, Steven Strasburg and Chad Billingsley. Sunday at 1 o'clock, Gio Gonzalez, and he'll go up against Chris Capuano. One and two. Fastball hit the center. So after just missing a home run, he just misses a base hit. Of course, remember, the Nationals have not had a hit since LaRoche hit the home run in the sixth inning. That's 11 in a row. And here's the pinch hitter we expected to see, Chad Tracy. So Tracy off the bench. Chad, once upon a time with the Diamondbacks at seven years ago, he had 27 home runs. Because now he's a sometimes player, and that's ball one. From the Diamondbacks, and he was there from 04 to 09, about six years. Went down to the minors, surfaced briefly with the Cubs and the Marlins. One and one to Chad. He's out of Charlotte, North Carolina, went to East Carolina University. Well, there's big crowd, 44,807. 
Ball two, two and one. Dodgers trying to win their 14th out of 20. Trying to go seven and three in one run games. Trying to get Kershaw his 12th straight win at home and his 10th straight winning decision. And the Nationals are down to their last fight. Well, Kenley trying to close up shot. Two and two to Chad Tracy. Howled away. When Tracy played all the time, he had a big chance to hit one out, but he has not really played much in the last five years. And hit down the left field line foul. Eleven in a row retired since LaRoche hit the home run. Nationals had also won six of nine of one run games going into this one. Two and two. Hitting. Mm -mm. On the hand. That, by the way, was a 96 mile an hour fastball. So Chad Tracy, who's been very unlucky the last few years anyway, is now nailed by Kenley Jansen. On the wrist or hand. So Tracy comes up to pinch hit and suffers an injury. We'll have a runner for him. After Espinosa almost hit a home run. So that breaks the string. 11 in a row, and then they hit batter. Davey Johnson wants to talk to the plate umpire, Angel Hernandez. The batter will be Jesus Flores. But we need a runner for Tracy. I think. That's a tough break. Chad, who will be 32, doesn't get much playing time anymore. And then to come off the bench and get hammered. Well, we're waiting to see. Normally, you'd see the runner right away. Moving around is Edwin Jackson. Remember Edwin, the former Dodger? Well, here he comes. So Jackson will run. For Tracy. Your attention, please. Running at first base, number 33, Andrew Jackson. So Edwin Jackson, Edwin Jackson running, running at first, three to two in favor of the Dodgers. We're in the ninth inning, two out, and the batter will be Jesus Flores, grounded to third. Reached on an error and fly to left. Made a great tag, more importantly, a great block of the plate to prevent Chris Gwynn Number from 26. scoring. Catcher, he's now he's scoring. up there to decide whether the game will continue or not. So Edwin Jackson at first and Jesus Flores at the plate. And the strike. Laura is unhappy with the call on that. So the kid from Curacao facing the young fella from Venezuela. Jesus Flores and Edwin Jackson at first. Off the plate. Slider down and away. One ball and one strike.
waiting on deck, Rick Ankiel. Fastball at 92. One and two the count to Jesus Flores. Flores has only been in seven games. One and two. Got him. Fastball at 96 to end the game. So the Dodgers rolling along. Clayton Kershaw, the winner, is 2 0. He's now won 10 straight decisions, 12 straight at home. Dodgers will then face Strasburg and have Billingsley tomorrow night. It's Gonzalez on Sunday against Capuano, but a big one for the Dodgers to win it 3 2. Home run by Ethier and the same combination the left hook and the right cross, Matt Kemp and Andre Ethier. Stay tuned for Dodgers Live coming up next. Good night, everybody.